Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive with Dr. Rebecca Risk. Do you ever feel that even though nothing seems seriously wrong and you pass all the medical tests, that you still feel that your health, pain, and fatigue are completely out of control? It doesn't have to be that way. Listen to the tips and suggestions given on our program today and take back control of your health. Now, here is Dr. Rebecca Risk. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're welcoming Mayer Schneider back to the show. Amir has devoted his life to teaching people how to heal themselves by addressing every aspect of their being. He teaches his techniques at the School for Self-Healing based in San Francisco, California, and also holds workshops through the United States and all over the world. Today, we're discussing his new book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. So, Mayer, welcome back to the show. I feel honored uh, to be on your show, and it's a big pleasure. So, um, w- with your, your your book, obviously this took you some time. So, how did it come about that you put all of this together? It's a, it's interesting, you know. Um, when I had to to just tell to the audience something, I was born with cataracts, and I had unsuccessful surgeries, and I ended up growing as a blind kid. And I was given a blind certificate for good by the state of Israel, and everybody thought that basically that's my situation. I wasn't completely blind. I saw 1%, but that means that if I would look at you, I would see maybe your halo and maybe not so uh, defined and so clear. Um, And when I was uh, in my early teens, I met a person who showed me eye exercises based on the Bates method, which the ophthalmologist opposed for many years. I've worked with him diligently and I ended up developing enough vision to read, write, and drive. Now, my vision is not 100% vision. It's about 70% vision. But to go from 1% to 70% is a huge experience. Now... There was no way for me to improve my eyes without also working on my body. And uh, the reason is that you cannot really see better unless you also get better circulation. And I remember hours and hours that I was standing in the sea doing the sunning exercise, which is an eye exercise where I would close my eyes and move my head from side to side while working at the same time with my calves, and I've learned later on that that's the only way to eventually relax the neck because you need support of the whole body for the neck, so more blood will flow to the eyes, and the eyes will be more compliant with the exercises that you're doing. And so um, what was interesting in my case is that if you look at it medically, because 99% of my lens is scar tissue, and because I missed the essential time of vision development, which is the age of eight weeks to two and a half years of human's life, uh, I should have remained in the blind or very, very low vision category. But I was able to reverse that to a great extent, and uh, that made me think that other people can do better. And anyone who reads my first book, uh, 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 Movement for Self-Healing, based on my book, uh, Self-Healing, My Life and Vision, can see the history of it, that I met with people who also overcame many, many problems that were considered to be impossible to overcome, like great symptoms of polio, like problems with muscular dystrophy. And the idea that I started to develop is that our potential of change is great if we just give ourselves the chance and we become dedicated enough to the world of movement. The life always changes and it can change to the worse and it can change to the better. And what we're seeing these days in the world of degeneration uh, is that the life of most people changes to the worse in that because of sedentary lifestyle, because of uh, smoking and eating uh, irresponsibly, but mainly because of uh, not really knowing the right art of movement and overtaxing the body with exercises that eventually 
lead to destruction of the body. Many people get to a place of degeneration, uh, like arthritis is very common, breathing problems are very common, uh, blood pressure, high blood pressure is very common. And I'm seeing that, and I see that people <clears throat> don't think there's any way out of it. And when I was teaching my workshops in the 80s, I remember lecturing about the general topics that I'm lecturing right now. And then everybody wanted to know what to do with their specifics. And that's what got me to write the book, uh, which is, right now is the second uh, edition of the book. It was called The Handbook of Self-Healing, and now it's called Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. And uh, it is a very comprehensive book where you start with your problem. You have diabetes. There's a good chapter for diabetes. You have... Um, stroke, well, there's a good chapter to help you continue and work with your stroke. Physiotherapy does good work, but we, we improve it even more. You have problem with macular degeneration, that's where you start. But then eventually you work on all your body systems because all the body systems are important. And so this book didn't come simply from theory, uh, like I would think something and put it in writing. This book is actually a book that came from a lot of practice, and I try to explain theoretically why this practice works, but movement and presence with the body is what can make a huge difference in everyone's life, and that's the big message of the book, 535 pages of it. Um, so now the book is called Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. What does that mean? Well, I think that it's a sleep. <laughs> I think we don't know that we have that power, and I think that what we are resorting in the world of medicine is to a fix-it approach, like, you know, the right surgery, the right medication. In the world of holism, take the right vitamins, do the right regimen, do the right things, you'll do well. Well, it doesn't always work, does it? So the point is, there is a power within you that you can wake up and you wake it up by understanding yourself better, by building up kinesthetic or deep inner awareness of the body and that the body's power to heal is mighty. And I'll give you many examples of that. But what I want to say is that people doubt themselves. Look what happens. You have headaches. You're not looking for why you have headache. You just don't want the headache, so you'll take aspirin. You don't see well. You don't really care why you don't see well. You just take glasses to see better with. Um, you have inflammation. You have arthritis. Well, you'll take steroids. You can't breathe well. You take inhaler. And the result of all of that is that you sense that you cannot reverse all those things. Your back pain is there to stay forever. Uh, your stomach uh, uh, irritation and your bile irritation is there forever. That's how people truly, deeply feel. And all I'm saying is you have the power to actually reverse all that, become much more alive in the process of reversal. You have a power to avoid all that and to prevent all that by becoming more uh, familiar with the vital forces of your body. And that's why my book is so important. It's a quiet revolution of medical practice worldwide that will be done in your own uh, bedroom and your own living room and, truth of the matter is, in the rest of your life. And if you really will do it, I really believe in the 100 monkey theory in the sense that if you'll do it, it will actually, through its vibrations, will go elsewhere as well. And that's why I'm so happy to be on your show and so grateful you put me on. Well, I'm I'm so I'm I'm glad you're here so that we can you know share this information with people. Um, so you mentioned kinesthetic awareness, or can you just explain what that is? So you know, um, you feel what your body wants. You feel what your body needs. Sometimes I want to run vigorously. 
because that's what my body needs this minute. Sometimes I need to lift weights because that's what the body needs. But sometimes I need to move uh, very subtly, which I would call micro movements, because that's exactly what my body needs this moment. There'll be other times that all I need is to breathe deeply. So kinesthetic awareness comes with sensing what the body wants. Your body is your house. And there was one very famous uh, uh, writer that wrote, your body is your house, you're the landlord, and a long time ago you lost the keys. And the, the key for the body is sensing what it wants and each time working on it differently. So if you look at my book, it starts with breathing because kinesthetic awareness cannot be without breathing. It's a deep issue of the body. So that's where kinesthetic awareness begins. And um, if you breathe and you sense what gets your breathing deeper and what gets your breathing shallower, then you're starting the process of sensing your body from within and responding to that. Then it continues with the chapter on circulation. Well, circulation is very uh, passive. Most people don't know. Actually, it's not passive. It's active. Very silent. That's where I want to correct myself. Most people don't know whether you're about to get a heart attack, that you don't have enough blood flow to your heart, or whether you're in a very good situation, but you do have some signs that shows you if your circulation is good or not good. For example... Uh, you know that if you're fatigued at this moment, the blood doesn't flow well. You know that if um, you are stiff, stiffer than normal, and it doesn't matter if your yoga teacher could, could put your leg behind your head or if you are very arthritic, but at this moment, the very arthritic could move slightly better. That means his or her circulation is better. And the yoga teacher, who can put her legs behind her head, can still do it, but with some more difficulties. So the point is we need to have a relaxation of the body, lack of fatigue, easy movement, lightness, and uh, then we know our blood flows well. So breathing is so important in terms of um, the different temperature we're in. For example, as I sit and talk to you, sometimes I have a need with my body to stand. Sometimes I have a need with my eyes to be in the dark and in the light. So basically, kinesthetic awareness is greater and greater awareness of the body instead of following discipline, instead of following yoga or aerobics or any kind of regime that has somebody else choreographed for you, but you don't really sense what your own body needs. And that's one of the biggest messages of my book. With 600 exercises and 300 illustrations, 600 exercises and 300 illustrations, when I actually want you to do five of them at a time and not 600 at a time and slowly, slowly develop more and more sense of what you need to do. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're talking about this. I actually had this conversation yesterday with my chiropractor about, you know, our, our, our body's needs. And we, we were talking about posture. And, you know, uh, when I've been to lots of therapists um, through my health journey, and they'd always tell me, be aware of your posture. But sometimes my needs for my posture would be different. And, you know, he was talking about how it moves and changes all day what we do, which I think is what, what you're talking about of don't have that rigid posture, but be aware of what your body needs. And like you said, you might need the dark for your eyes or the light for your eyes. And it's, it's the same with any other part of our body that we have to be aware and listen to what we need. Absolutely. And you know, there could be a part in your room where you could breathe deeper and part in your room where you don't breathe as deep. It could be all kinds of things that happens in your life which are uh, changing them. And let's talk about posture. It, you know, all your muscles are vectors of power. Most people have, uh, in spite of having 640 muscles, they use between 50 and 75 of them. Now, some of them will never use. Um, I will never have 
the same wonderful muscles that Arthur Rubinstein, the famous pianist, had because it was so subtle and so great. And when he was 94, he lived 95 years, he was arthritic all over his body except his fingers because he knew how to move them and the sound was so precious to him. Most people will not have the same subtlety that I have with my fingers as I was reading Braille for so many years and became a body worker, fine body worker, and I work with people with muscular dystrophy and then people with multiple sclerosis and arthritis and eye problems, and I really know where to touch them and how to touch them, how to loosen them up. And people say, how did you know this place is sore for me? How did you know that by loosening my lower back, uh, my, my neck will be better? Well, that is the kind of sensation that builds up better muscle control. But all of us could use more muscles. All of us do not use enough of our abductors. All of us don't use our toes enough. And people who are armless can actually uh, play instruments, feed themselves. I have heard of somebody who could snipe uh, the diapers over her uh, infant with her toes when she, uh, she had uh, no arms. So we have the same toes, but we never learn to use them. And what happens is throughout life, we degenerate and we use less and less of our muscles, so the connective tissue hardens around them, and that makes our posture. And if we learn to use more of our muscles and loosen the ones we always overused, we will then have a dynamic posture that is going to change in a flexible way to every situation that we need. That's perfect. We're going to take a quick break. We're talking today with Meir Schneider. We're discussing his book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. So the show is all about you. Stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. Become our friend on Facebook. Post your thoughts about our shows and network on our timeline. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America. Too many times, the medical profession tries to treat addicts with addictive medication. It's like putting them in a chemical straitjacket. This only masks the problem, but does nothing to cure it. The allopathic model for treating addiction has turned out to be a huge failure. The holistic model holds much more promise for treating and curing addiction. On Total Health Recovery, from addiction to super health. Join host Sadhu Khalsa and his guests to learn about treatments and services that work. Learn how to heal yourself and transform your life. Listen Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Voice America Health & Wellness. Do you ever have an off day? Or is your life positive and uplifting? Making Life Brighter is a forum for positive, inspired, and contemplative thought, showcasing experts in their fields, including authors, musicians, and artists. Your host, Winifred Adams, will bring to life topics to stimulate and make your life brighter. We want to hear from you. Be sure to tune in Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Health & Wellness Channel. Are you tired of the healthcare system only treating your symptoms and never addressing the root cause? Discover how integrative medicine can resolve health issues through dietary and lifestyle changes and the use of natural supplements. Increase your energy, memory, mood, immune system, sexuality, and more. Join Dr. Sunil Pai and Maureen Sutton to help you take back your health with natural, evidence-based solutions. Tune in every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Voice America Health & Wellness Channel. Tune in every Tuesday for C. diff, spores, and more with host Nancy Kerala. Our program is to provide information about C. diff, healthcare-associated infections, and more. Nancy is a C. diff survivor, healthcare professional, and founder and executive director of the C. diff Foundation. Together with her guests, we'll explore C. diff infection prevention, treatments, environmental safety, and more. Listen every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific on Voice America Health & Wellness. Opinions, options, answers. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. You 
are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're talking with Meir Schneider. He's the author of Awakening Your Power to Self-Healing. So, Meir, can you just um, tell me what it means to prevent a disease? Um, you know, in, in the, the Western medicine world, I know prevention to them is once you get a disease, they want to put you on some medication to to deal with inflammation or whatever is going on to prevent it from getting worse. But is there another way to look at that? I actually want to bring up this thing. Uh, You have a disease, they give you drugs to get rid of inflammation. You know, there's always the day after. So uh, I'll give you a story, and that's going to be a very good uh, descriptive of that. I met a wonderful guy by the name of Bert. I wrote about him in my uh, book, Movement for Self-Healing. I really liked him, by the way. And he... (laughs) took an um, uh, inhaler, you know, with steroids, uh, against his asthma. He had a hard time breathing. It was great. It cost only $2 a day, and he was able to breathe wonderfully. But after 19 years of doing it, he discovered that he lost 40% of his bones. Okay? So then uh, he stopped them all of a sudden, which, by the way, is never a wise thing to do. So he did that, and he coughed, because the biggest problem with asthma is that you can't really exhale well. And he coughed so hard that he pulled a muscle in his lower back, and he couldn't lie down easily. And so a friend of his stretched him, was a nice Samaritan, but after that stretch, He could not sleep anymore. So he was sitting on a chair when he was asleep. He met me for eight days in a row, working with me to uh, get rid of that spasm, and then I could send him to one of my other therapists to keep working with him. Things went very well, but then he decided, after not uh, making some appointments with the therapist, to go back to his steroids. And then he got diabetes. And uh, the diabetes escalated to, the ex- to a great extent. He had cataract in his left eye. They removed the cataract. And then, unfortunately, he had gangrene, and they cut the leg of his uh, right eye, uh, right, right leg from the knee down, which is a side effect of diabetes. So then they did another surgery, and, they, uh, and then he had... Uh, uh, bleeding, and he became blind. And I worked with him with light therapy to wake up the eye, which I walk in until the doctor tell him, ah, that doesn't mean anything, and he lost even that improvement. So what I'm trying to say is to take steroids to get better, to take drugs to prevent symptoms. You prevent symptoms today, but then what happens tomorrow may be worse than the symptom that you have. It all depends on the symptom. And so I think the true prevention is, yes, sometimes you have an illness that you do need to treat, like uh, diabetes. So you will take insulin, uh, and you don't have any choice about that. But there are all kinds of ways to help diabetes, like improving your blood flow. And we improve your blood flow with tapotmen. Why is that? Because the secondary condition of diabetes is poor circulation. That's how you lose your vision, that's how you lose your kidneys, and that's how you lose your limbs. So we do special deportment because blood is, um, is, uh, is, is being formed in the bones. So when we tap the bones, we create better formation of blood cells, and that prevents many of the symptoms. But truly, prevention of illness starts with working on yourself daily. 
You know, I, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, and I, I think it, this is why I do this show, you know, when it, it's um, it exercises and, and books like yours and then the books on diet and, and all these things that we can do to change our lives and make that future different, right? So that we can prevent ourselves from getting diabetes and we can prevent, you know, the, the pain and arthritis caused by the inflammation that can be caused by the food or whatever is going on. And, um, and, and I think, I, I just wish that that the view of that was different. I mean, there's this new wave coming where where people, you know, like you and I are talking about this, but but there's um, there's so so many people that just think that we're kind of crazy that we want to prevent ourselves from getting sick. Well, let me tell you something very interesting. More people die from um, from anti pain for uh, from arthritic medications than from all illegal drugs put together. There is the day after. And so I want to actually tell the audience what I suggested in my book. The first chapter is on breathing. For example, I took a whole group of people that we were sitting in a, a closed space. There was rain outside, so the tendency was, of course, not to go out. It was an evening. But I said, you know what? Breathing starts to degenerate once you sit in a dark room, uh, sorry, in a closed room all the time. Well, let's go out. So we went out for about two minutes and uh, we um, breathed uh, the fresh air, came back and people felt that they breathed deeper for the next 10 minutes indoors. So changing environment is very important. Changing visual environment is very important. Um, and so the important thing is that, uh, you know, many people sit in front of a desk, look at a computer, many clerks sit in front of desks, and the result is that they uh, stop breathing as deeply. So changing environment is so important. Get out of your desk, go out and breathe, go to the sun. Go even to the cold weather of Calgary if you need for about one minute to just take a deeper breath and return to your setting. Then I'm talking about finding more room in your, in your body to breathe. And I suggest for people to work on the breathing and on finding more room in the body to breathe for about six weeks. Then there's the chapter on circulation where we talk about loosening the uh, shoulder joints and the hip joints so the blood will flow easier all over your body because most people don't know that put circulation is a silent killer all over the world and better circulation makes a very big difference and I give people all kinds of ways to know when the circulation is better or worse so they can work on themselves then there's a chapter on joints and one statement I made there is some people never think about the joints and some people think about nothing else because their joints hurt. And so I'm talking about balancing the use of the muscles, as I spoke with you in the previous segment, and that prevents most osteoarthritis. And I, uh, I will talk about rheumatoid arthritis in the other part of the book, but uh, that's an important thing. And then I'm working on the spine, where the word balance is so important because so many problems start with the spine. And... Uh, these days people are weakening the spine with surgeries and with, uh, uh, with, with exercise. For example, we learn to tighten our abdomen to support the back. To some extent it's a correct thing, but many people over tighten it to such an extent that the back muscles themselves become weak and they don't support themselves. So working on the back muscles themselves recognizing their existence is so important. Most of us don't even know as, uh, about the back as much as we know about our hands. In one hand, you have more motor control than in your whole back, so sensing the back is important. Working on muscle isolation is very important. That's in the muscle chapter. And you know, you can actually affect your... Um, uh, nervous system, and that is in the nervous system chapter, you can 
control your nervous system. You can do everything that uh, Mr. Deutsch is talking about, the brain that, that, that changes himself. Well, you can actually do it with exercises, and that's in my book. And also you can affect your automatic, autonomic nervous system with sphincter exercises. You can affect your whole body with massage. And I will never forget the lady who, who had a breast removed. And I told her to massage herself. And she said, Mayor, it's the first time I'm starting to like myself. And that was very important for her. And that was very important for the next 30 years of her life. And then there's a chapter on vision. And vision can improve. If you see perfectly, you could see better. If you see poorly, you could see better. Those are the first eight chapters. Then there are 18 chapters of different needs from how do you work at the office without straining your eyes? How do you look at your smartphone without straining the eyes? The answer is simple. You look at a distance for a while to make sure your eyes are relaxing. You pay attention to your periphery. There is a chapter on running, how to run without injuring yourself by using your body in an even way. There's a chapter um, on for musicians, I call it you are your instrument. How to use your instrument, feel the vibrations, and how to isolate muscle groups and also relax the rest of your body. Many people have very loose hands when they play string instruments, but those poor people have a stiff body. And that doesn't work for them eventually, so loosening the body. And then headaches. We have so, so wonderful things to talk about headaches. And uh, we talk about arthritis, we talk about muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, st uh, strokes, Parkinson's, and then we talk, of course, about different vision problems, glaucoma, cataract, um, and macular degeneration, and others. So what I'm saying is, if somebody has glaucoma, they probably will read uh, the vision problem chapter, the second part of the book, but then we'll refer them to the beginning of the book. We'll refer them for a few exercises, in the uh, breathing chapter, if you exercise in the joint chapter, I'm trying to tempt people when they deal with a problem to eventually uh, work with their whole body and to eventually live better life because the biggest sin we all have is we live more than life that restricts us and we have to start and feel free in our body. Um, so, you know, that it sounds like your, your, your book is very thorough. Um, and where would you suggest if somebody's picking that up that, that they start with? Breathing. Go with the chapters one by one. I don't want you to do 600 exercises at once. <laughs> I would not do it, you know. Uh, that's not what I want you to do. But I want you to take the book as your personal body encyclopedia, you know. You take the book and you work on yourself on breathing and you spend six weeks. You take the book and you work on circulation and you spend, spend five or six weeks on that. You work on the joints for four weeks. You work on the spine for three weeks. And each time you work on five exercises, but there might be one of them that you liked so much you'll carry it with you. So you'll do six and seven and eight. <clears throat> and eventually when you finish the the first eight chapters, you may end up doing 20 exercises a day, which you felt were the best ones for you. You may separate them. You may spend half an hour in the morning and 10 minutes in the afternoon and 15 minutes in the evening working on yourself. And you will learn how to um, do this work during your work time, during your play time. That, for example, you learn to adapt to the sun instead of reject the sun, instead of putting sunglasses on, you actually will have strong enough pupils where the sun does not bother you and strong enough retina where the radiation doesn't bother you. You will learn to adapt to the dark of the night and uh, not need a flashlight at night. You may learn to uh, not allow your back to get stiff from oversitting by standing every 20 minutes and stretching. For example, holding your leg and lifting it backwards and uh, Push, pushing your chest forward so your head drops back and you look at the ceiling. All of you can do it. You like grab your ankle uh, as you stand up, lift your leg backwards, uh, look, look at the ceiling or the sky, 
Take yourself two or three deep breaths. You do it with one leg, and then you do it with the other leg. And if you do it every 20 minutes that you sit, you will end up having a much looser back because the back muscles were never meant to sit for hours. And that's what modern people do. So I give tips for every walk of life, basically, and to avoid degeneration, which becomes the curse of the 21st century and was already the curse of the end of the 20th century. And I think that without that, we are going to deteriorate and our kids will deteriorate even more because of this kind of lifestyle. And so this book brings a new message, a new life to ourselves in the most practical way. And I suggest for people to have a support group, to meet once a week with neighbors and friends, to go over some of the exercises and work together on those issues. Like I had a support group, one lady called me, she said, in our room, when we meet as a group, we don't have enough floor space, we sit on chairs. So I've given them a few exercises to do on the chairs since they cannot use the floor. But, you know, there'll be floor exercises, there'll be chair exercises, there'll be exercise for the outside, exercise for the inside. And what I'm saying is, you don't have to be overwhelmed. What you're doing is you're studying your body. You're starting to understand other people's body. There's real good explanation of how the body works in the most simple way there is. And your life will never be the same. It's a venture that you can't afford to miss. Well, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. We're talking today with Mayor Schneider. We're discussing his book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. We'll be back shortly. Think you've seen everything there is to see in online television? Let us surprise you. Visit voiceamerica.tv today for sports, health, business, and more on demand 24-7. Relationship issues? Anxious? Parenting challenges? No more. Learn how to live your best life. Tune into Straight Talk with top psychotherapist, relationship, and anxiety expert, Sandra Reich. In this program, you'll learn how to transform your challenges into effective solutions, whether it's relationships, parenting, anxiety issues, or other life traps that you struggle with. Sandra will show you how to change them and how to live the life of your dreams. Listen every Thursday afternoon at 6 p.m. Eastern Time and 3 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Is your health where you think it should be? If you're like most people, the answer is probably not. Where can you get the answers you need to get on the right track? The answers start on Occupy Health. Each week, host Dr. Susan Downs and her guest experts will answer your questions as well as prepare you for questions you'll want to ask your health provider. You'll want to plan for your optimal health with Occupy Health. Listen Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Voice America Health & Wellness. For women who have problems conceiving, all too often it can be a heartbreak, expensive treatments that don't work, and a lot of dashed hope. It doesn't have to be this way if you just know when. Join host Helen Denise as she shares stories of success from women who never thought they could have a baby, yet used amazing products and techniques to achieve such success. Every woman of every age and lifestyle should tune in to know when. Mondays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. Sometimes it just seems that nobody understands. There's one individual who can help. If you're living with somebody who faces challenges such as autism, Asperger's, or other exceptional needs, you'll want to tune into Solutions and Strategies with Dr. Sean. Living the Challenge. Together, we'll uncover a variety of solutions to the challenges faced by individuals, their families, and teachers. Listen live every Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on Voice America Health & Wellness. Opinions, options, answers. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. Wellness. 
You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're talking today with Meir Schneider. We're discussing his book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. So, Meir, um, you know, you, you mentioned in your book that the the first chapter is where everybody should start, which is about breathing. Can you walk us through one of your exercises just so we can get an idea of what that looks like? Yeah, the most important thing in breathing is exhalation. Even though what we want to do is to inhale, but the brain is very much involved in breathing. And if there is a sense in the body that you have a lot of oxygen, the body would want to exhale it. And before there is a sense of this depletion of oxygen, the body will not want to inhale. So first of all, I recommend for everyone to breathe in and out through the nose. And the out breathing should be slower than the in breathing. And then a very simple exercise is for all of us to look up at the ceiling and tap on our chest and feel if we are starting to create more room in the chest to breathe. And then look straight and massage the abdomen, especially the upper abdomen, and invite breathing into our hand. And then massage uh, the lower abdomen and invite breathing into uh, our hand there by warming that abdomen. And then to bend forwards and to massage the lower back or tap on it with the back of the fist. Actually, it's the front of the fist, yeah, with between the thumb and the index, to tap on it as you bend forward and you restricted the breathing in the front part of your body. And now you increase the breathing in the back part of your body, so you easily breathe. And then you sit up and you breathe. And there are many more exercises. But to give you an example, two of my practitioners called me from uh, the emergency room because their sons at a young age had asthma attack in, in separate times. And so I told them, massage your son's abdomen and have him Feel the heat. Massage your son's rib, ribs and have the son feel the heat in the ribs. Massage your son's back and have your son feel the heat in the back. And before, um, uh, bef- before they met the doctor, they left the uh, emergency room because the asthma attack disappeared. So feeling different parts of the body makes a very huge difference. So does that just bring our awareness to the area? or Exactly. Yeah. That's what we talked about, kinesthetic awareness. Because people who have asthma, for example, fight to breathe against restriction in their chest, or at least that's what they perceive. You know, on the way to the lungs, in the bronchi, they become spastic. So you don't fight a spasm, you outsmart a spasm. And the way you outsmart a spasm is by thinking about other places that relate to breathing. Thinking about the bottom of your lungs, thinking about your abdomen, thinking about your ribs, and allowing uh, the breathing to be more uh, uh, all-encompassing, basically. So I think that breathing deeply is something we have to work on, but when we get that, Life is different. You think clearer, you feel better, all your exercises are useful. So are, are people not breathing properly in their, in their normal lives? Everybody breathes, but some people breathe shallow. The deeper you breathe, the more alive you are. You know, there was once uh, a, a Buddhist monk that was, was asked by someone, uh, it was Thich Nhat Hanh, was asked, are you here? Uh, so, so he asked him, uh, why are we here? And he answered, are you here? So, yeah, you can breathe and leave, but you can breathe shallow. 
and your thought can be unclear, and your movement can be restricted, and you can breathe deeply. And deeply does not mean forcefully, and does not mean deep all of a sudden, but with time, in all the different situations, you'll breathe deeper. Of course, you'll breathe deeper when you run than when you sit. But while running, you'll breathe deeper. And while sitting, you'll breathe deeper. And that is very, very important because our potential to breathe is much greater than we experience. And therefore, we are not as vital as we could be if we breathe deeper. And many, many problems that we have would disappear, but also the the pleasure and the sense of life grows. So, um, you know, we're we're uh, considered in the middle of an opioid crisis right now, and uh, it, you know, it it seems for pain, people aren't getting yeah, relief either. Um, is there something people can do in your book, um, even if it's our, whether it's arthritis or another kind of pain? How can they help themselves to deal with that? I am so happy we woke up and understood we have a crisis. I thought we had it for the last fifty years. Basically, <laughs> it took and, a while. And the, the problem does not start with those exotic situation uh, in exceptional cases, like you know an irresponsible pregnant woman who affects a child and all that. That does happen, definitely. It starts with the first minute that you go to your doctor and you say I have a headache and he gives you aspirin, and then you don't have to work on anything that caused your headache. You don't have to change your diet. You don't have to do anything about uh, your colon. You don't have to deal with the stress level in your life. You take an aspirin and you don't have the headache. Beautiful. You know that there's also a day after. You'll need to take another aspirin and more aspirin and Vicodins and more of this and more of that. So basically we're living in a crazy time where we have an industry that tells us that we need to feel comfortable. And for that comfortable industry, the United States is spending 17% of its whole mighty budget, basically. So people are doing everything to not feel their inner pain. I say, first of all, deal with what caused your problem and accept your pain as a part of your problem. And slowly, slowly, you won't have that pain. So if you have sciatic attack, what you need to do is put ice on your lower back, lie on your side, bend both knees, Let's say uh, you have sciatic on your right leg, so you lie on your left leg. If you have a sciatic on your left leg, you lie on your right side. And you bend both knees and you massage the area that hurts. And you uh, lie on tennis balls, as I described in my book, in the areas which are tight. And you slowly, slowly wean yourself out of your sciatica. Take pills and function. And with time, you will create more problems in your back, and then you take a surgery that fixes it, and then with time your back becomes more vulnerable. The first time that you uh, fall or lift something, you'll have pain elsewhere, and it's going to be even worse. So what I'm saying is there's always a day after what you've done, and the opioid crisis started. I will never forget, there was one lady who pulled a wisdom tooth of mine. She said, here are the pills for you. Well, I understood why she... It gave me anesthesia when she pulled it, but I said, I don't want to take those pills. You know what? It didn't even hurt me afterwards, but she expected me to have pain. I took some homeopathy in case, in case I needed it, but she expected me to have pain when the, uh, in, the anesthesia would, would wear out, and so I should take pills against that pain. I think this is the mentality that we have, and, and people want to always, always soothe the pain. But I think they should learn from the pain and get and work on the depth of the problem that causes it. Well, you know, I, I agree with you. Pain is our, our body's way of telling us that there's something wrong. And our um, traditional response to it is just to cover it up. And it, it's sort of, you know, we are ignoring it. And this is why you're talking about awakening that power because we have been taught from a very young age 
to ignore things, to cover them up, to put a Band-Aid on it instead of actually dealing with it and learning how to deal with it. And then as we get older, we have all this stuff that we haven't dealt with and it's building up over time, as, as you explained earlier. And then we we are in a, a health crisis instead of... Well, you know, medicine we, is a Band-Aid medicine. You have glaucoma, okay? There's reasons for your glaucoma. Lack of balance use of the eyes, lack of blood flow to the optic nerve, lack of blood flow to the eyes. They don't know the reason. What they do is they say there is pressure in your eyes that can destroy the optic nerve, so they give you drops. Well, those drops are not very healthy. And then the drops eventually don't work. After you take several sets of drops, they give you more drops and more drops, and finally do a laser surgery. And then that laser is not... uh, uh, holding for a long time because it's another hole to drain your fluid and then they do another laser surgery and then they do a surgery and then you get cataract and then they remove the cataract and then you have retinal detachment and then they reattach the retina if you start to see how you're going in that direction the end result is basically death to the system I want to tell you that uh, I want to describe to you one case that I had that tells me how wrong we are about dismissing our power to survive and to heal. I had a lady, a girl who came to me at the age of eight from Hungary, and she had a disease which is ALS. You know, that's one of the worst curses on earth where basically the uh, motor nerves of the whole central nervous system dies. And I worked with her. There's a big story about that. And then I worked with her at the age of nine and the age of 10. And then I forgot about her. The doctors predicted at the age of eight that she'd be dead before the age of nine, then predicted at the age of nine that she'd be dead at the age of, before the age of 10. And then they were sure she'd die anyway and that she overstayed her life. Her mother died from cancer, or I would call it sadness, within two years after that. Then her father died from cancer as well. And I forgot about working with that wonderful girl by the name of Fanny. Uh, and I hope that one day you will interview her because she's amazing. And what happened is in her 20s, I'm getting a, a, an email, I'm doing well. <laughs> and then now she's 29, 20 years after she was supposed to be dead. I think the only other example in the world is Stephen Hawkins from England. And she is doing motivational speaks, speeches in Hungary. And she's married, and her husband is, um, uh, is teaching people breathing and read people poetry after her motivational speeches. And she's paralyzed to a great extent. But the fact that she's alive, when all the doctors thought she'll be dead, should come back to you. The fact that... The doctor told you it's time for steroid. Maybe something for you to think about. Open the internet. See if you really need them. Work with my book. The fact that you're about to take an aspirin to get rid of your headache, think about funny. She's alive. Think about me. I'm seeing. Well, think about situations like that and understand how much power you have. And that's what my book came to do, to awaken your power for you in the most practical way you can do it. Well, well, thank you for, for sharing that. We are um, nearing the end of the show, but if there is any way somebody wants more information so they can awaken their own power, how can they get a hold of you or, or anything else? First of all, you can get my book in Amazon or from us. You can uh, call us at 415-665-9574 or from abroad, 001-415-665-9574. Um, and you can uh, look at www.self-healing.org. But get my book in Amazon, get my book in your, lo- better than that, get my book in your local bookstore or get the book from us. We have, we have it for sale and it's the first time that I decide to be my own publisher. So we have a, uh, so we are the, the publishers of that book. All my other books <laughs> were with other publishers. Well, perfect. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for interviewing me. 
And I want to thank everybody for listening. We are speaking today with Meir Schneider. We're discussing his book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. So thanks so much. Be sure to make today a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Please join Dr. Rebecca Risk again next Monday at noon Eastern Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. We'll talk more next week.